Welcome to this episode of Mystical Mondays as we embark on a profound exploration of suffering and its significance in our lives. I'm Mary Mundy, and I'm honored to be your guide on this journey of introspection and insight. Suffering, we all hate that word, don't we? It's a word that carries weight. When we talk about suffering, we are referring to any form of physical, emotional, or existential pain or distress that we experience as human beings. It's that feeling of heaviness in our hearts when we're grieving, the physical pain when we endure during illness or injury, or the existential angst that arises when we confront life's uncertainties. But beyond the surface level, suffering is also a profound teacher, a mirror that reflects back to us our deepest fears, desires, and vulnerability. We all have wondered why, why do we suffer? It's a question that philosophers and theologians have pondered for centuries. Some believe that suffering is a test of faith, a challenge that we must overcome to prove our strength. Others see suffering as a necessary part of the human experience, a crucible that we are forced to overcome and transform from. From a spiritual perspective, suffering can be seen as a catalyst of growth, prompting us to question our deepest beliefs and confront our shadow selves and ultimately transcend our limitation. In many spiritual traditions, suffering is viewed not as a punishment, but as a pathway to enlightenment. In Buddhism, for instance, the Buddha taught that suffering, or dukkha, is an inherent part of life caused by attachments to desires and aversions. By cultivating mindfulness and compassion, we can liberate ourselves from suffering and attain a state of inner peace and liberation known as nirvana. Similarly, in Christianity, Suffering is seen as redemptive, a sharing in the suffering of Christ that leads to spiritual purification and salvation. These perspectives remind us that suffering is not meaningless. It's a sacred part of the human journey that we can lead to profound spiritual insights and transformation. Compassion is often described as the ability to feel empathy and extend kindness toward ourselves and others. It's a powerful antidote to suffering. When we approach our own pain and hardships with compassion, we create a space for healing and self-acceptance. Similarly, when we extend compassion to others who are suffering, we foster connection and solidarity, reminding ourselves that we are not alone in our struggles. Compassion is like a soothing balm for the wounds of the soul, offering comfort and solace in times of distress. Now let's talk about the practical approaches to navigate suffering in our daily lives. It's quite a challenge, isn't it? One approach is mindful meditation, bringing our attention to the present moment with openness and acceptance. Through mindfulness, we can observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, cultivating inner peace in the face of adversity. Another way is self-care, engaging in activities that nourish our bodies, minds, and spirit. This could include things like spending time in nature, 
praying, practicing yoga, or connecting with friends and family members who we love. And more importantly is to surrender our suffering, that which we cannot control, to God. In giving it up to God, we are taken out of the driver's seat and our faith resides in the help that God will provide for us. And in doing so, we open up our hearts and allow the energy of pure love of God in fully. And of course, we may seek support, whether it's through therapy, medicine, friends. We might gain a different perspective and guidance during difficult times, and God may lead us there. And let's not forget about finding meaning in suffering, whether it's through creative expression, service to others, Embracing a sense of purpose, finding meaning can give us the strength to endure even the most challenging of situations. In my life, for instance, I had a very hard time conceiving my second child. And I went through a lot of anguish in going through this. But now I understand, I am able to speak to others who are now in that situation. And so my suffering did have a purpose. As we journey deeper into the heart of suffering, we're reminded of the inherent mystery of our existence. While we may never fully understand why we suffer, we may find solace in the knowledge that even in our darkest moments, we are not alone. That there is always the light of the divine bringing us comfort. I invite you to take a moment right now to reflect on your own relationship with pain and hardship. Anguish. How do you respond to suffering? You put your hand on your heart and go deep within yourself. And you may be suffering now and I invite you to lift it up to God. You may not know the purpose of your suffering at this very moment. You may have to wait, but you will know. And what lessons have you learned from your darkest moments? And most importantly, how can you harness the power of suffering to cultivate greater compassion, wisdom, courage, spiritual connectedness, and strength in your life. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of discovery. Until next time, may you find peace and strength and God in the midst of suffering. And may you walk in the path of transformation with grace. God bless you all from my heart. Cheers.